and welcome to a brand new series from the Honest Football Podcast called You Are The Ref. This week I'm going to be the host and Craig and Charlie are going to go through some refereeing scenarios and let me know what they would do and then we'll find out if it was right. We've got a classic textbook that Charlie found around the Christmas period and we're going to get all the answers through that. This new midweek series from the textbook signed by Howard Webb will be available every week where we've not got one of our favourite game interviews. <laughs> And for our first week, we take a focus on our first trip from this textbook. And this trip is, for some reason, endorsed by Stephen Island. <laughs> right. The, the drawing of right, right. okay. the great Stephen Island. So we've got, what, three scenarios? So each strip has three refereeing scenarios, bizarre things that could occur in a footballing game, and you've got to tell me what you would do if you were the ref, and we'll see if you are correct. Is there pictures? There are pictures, but they are not very Brilliant. useful for your answers. Oh, okay. So uh, there's no picture of Stephen Island. There is a picture. Oh, there of is a picture. Of just there. There. He's, oh, not, he's not relevant to the scenario. He's, he's not, not relevant like, to the story. His head looks like a World Cup. I'm trophy. not quite sure why there's a player <laughs> into these scenarios because they have nothing to do with the players. Maybe but, because hey. the uh, author is an artiste. Right. Maybe. Scenario one. Scenario number one. Now I've picked Stephen Island's trip because I think these are all fairly straightforward. Okay. And as I said to Charlie off camera a minute ago, I want to find out how thick you are. <laughs> so let's start with number one. Now you need to listen carefully because these aren't the shortest in the world. Okay. The ball goes out for a corner in the last gasp moment of the game. A striker dashes behind the goal line to retrieve it and throws it to a colleague so he can take a quick corner. You all with me so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The corner taker knocks the ball short, allowing the striker, who had collected the ball from off the pitch, oh. to run on and get the pass. He plays it through to whip in across, and the two men on the goal line guarding the post are furious as the ball is put into the back of the net. What action do you take, if any? So... <laughs> I don't know if so, he's done anything so wrong. Has, the goal has been assisted. This is this. Ooh. But he was off the pitch. Is that ungenerous? Yeah, that, that's just to confirm. The goal has been assisted. The goal's been given. The goal has been a. No, no. The goal. Has, you're deciding that. You're the ref. <laughs> oh, <what? The> goal, <laughs> you are the ref. <laughs> the goal has been assisted by the player who retrieved the ball, who was off the pitch when the corner was taken. What do you do? Oh, I see. Physically, off, he's offside, isn't he? No, no. Because there'll be two lads on the line. No. There were two players on the goal line. I don't think. I think at most, I think at most you can do it for gen- ungenerous conduct. I don't so, think he's broken well, as, a as a person who's been uh, had a goal disallowed for ungenerous conduct <laughs> back in the day. Yeah, I don't. I can see what this, this is quite a good thing for you, isn't it? Because for a lot of these, you're going to have to decide: is this a legal referee yeah. issue or is this a moral issue? Is it technically offside? I, I think. I need VAR on this. No, he's not. I don't think he's broken law. Because it's not like he's left the play field of play because of injury and then just ran on. I think that's different because you know the referee has to allow him to come back. But the ball's I, not, I, ball's okay, not, my ball's, answer is ball's not going forward. It's going. And no, see, he's not offside. No, he should not be offside. It's whether he's ended, ended the field of play illegally while the ball was in play. Technically, so I'm gonna, technically, no. I'm going to pressure here, so I'm going to say, Charlie, can you give me your, your verdict? I'm going to say that he's not actually done as, as much as morally it's a bit shit. I don't think he's done anything wrong, and I think you have to award the goal. That would be my first answer. There's part of me thinking possibly no genuine conduct, but I don't think you could do him for that. I would say goal, unfortunately. Craig Savage, any different opinion? No, I, I'm. it's not offside because the ball's obviously not going forward because it's a corner, otherwise you'd go for a goal kick. <laughs> um, I think it's a goal. So you're both in agreement that you believe it's a goal and it's a moral issue rather Yeah, I don't think you can do anything wrong. Uh, I, don't think, yeah, I, I don't think it's morally wrong either. I don't think it's morally wrong either. I think it's just... Quick thinking. Well, so, shall we get the answer of former referee Keith Hackett? Let's go for it. Oh, yeah. not Keith. <laughs> yeah, it is. This whole book almost is Keith Hackett. So <laughs> Hello, Keith. Despite being signed by Howard Webb. Right. Go who, for it. who, just off the cuff, completely tells us at the start of this book that he's a former World Cup referee. <laughs> Fine. You can put that I, picture I think, on the I Twitter. think we know that, Keith. Uh, so, Keith Hackett has said, as both of you two have, take no action. Very good. Yes. Play on for the purposes of judging an offside not even worried about the ball going forward there are two players on the goal line which is yeah. the key here mm-hmm. anyone who comes on the field of play from behind the goal line is judged to be on the goal line oh ok oh, right. Okay. so by the purposes of when this corner is taken he is level can't be offside, yeah. so he sets it up just because then, the two players are on the post two players are on the post so if they've been one yard in front of the post you've now got offside because he's on the goal line oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, simple okay. as that okay. so wow for that reason, the goal is given, and you are correct. It's a moral issue. We are refs. not. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Apologies to headphone users. Oh, On to number two. I'm very glad that you both got to a quick decision here. Now I think the next. It's quicker two, than VAR. <laughs> it's quicker than VAR. I think the next two are even more obvious. So let's see how we get on. Oh no! Right, it's clear again, though. It's get, clear. get listening. A keeper pulls off a miraculous point blank save. Yeah. Miraculous being the key word. <laughs> so I don't think it is. Okay. 
He's still on the ground as the ball bounces forward to a striker who has darted between two defenders to try and slot the ball home, almost as if you two were trying to defend in the sun. <laughs> Both defenders turn on... Well, turn you're not in goal then. <laughs> Both defenders turn, this is a crucial bit, and simultaneously tackle him. Oh, no. Both of them miss the ball, each catching a leg at the same time, bringing him down. Oh, gosh. What do you do? Who wants to go oh, first? Oh, that's such a but it's clearly, the player, so it's clearly a penalty. A penalty. Yeah, yeah, but, clearly. yeah, but what action do you take? Charlie, I'm going to let you go first. You well, can, the thing well is, you have to warn the penalty. Yes. If, if the keeper's on the floor, I assume it's denying a goal scoring opportunity. Yes. Which at the time that I think this but would have been. Made, that book, obviously, it had to triple. It would have to have been a, a red card as well. But, yeah. no, but, but do you, who, do you who, send who, both of them off? That's yeah. the thing. Uh, but the key here from the attempt was. It's like, the first they person. Both, they did not attempt to win the ball, they took the man out. Oh, yeah, but who, but so uh, even the triple jeopardy doesn't matter. But the thing is, oh, okay. who fouled him first? Right, in that case then, well, so for me, my answer has to be a penalty. Okay. There has to be a sending off. It's whether you send both of them off. I think you have to. I think if they've both done him, I think it's, I, I would say penalty, two red cards. I know it sounds horrendous, but if they both had an equal part in his bringing down and like, it was violent conduct, I think they both have to go. Okay. So you're saying it's a red card for a red, foul? Two red cards for the two, two red cards, cards for two red cards fouls. And, and a penalty. Uh, Craig Savage, do you have any differing views on that? I part? think it's a penalty. Uh, I think it's a red card, but from the, obviously from the referee's point of view, from where his angle is, I think it's who fouled the player first. But you need uh, to decide there that. Is, there is no first. It is simultaneous. Oh, so they're both at the exact same exact time? Exact same time. Oh, I'll have to go. Penalty, yes. Red, yes. For both. Oh god! Or do yeah. you just do you make one escape one escape go one of them and just go you found him more and cover yourself? Well, then it's you might as well, well if they're both at the same time they both hacked him down and obviously you can't. I don't think you can possibly give two red cards for the same tackle. Oh. I don't think you could. So you okay, you so send one, you do, give one red card. Uh, yeah. How are you choosing? That's the problem. Well, let me know. <laughs> I, I need you to solve it because you are the ref. If you didn't know by now, Craig. <laughs> That's the problem. No, I, I I go I would go with Charlie Charlie's. Uh, Penalty two red cards. I yeah, mean, that's a unanimous uh, thing from both of us. Yeah. Well, Craig Savage, I want you to learn this early in this series. Don't listen to Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> right, was I right? On. Was I right the first time? So, only one offence has been committed. Despite the fact that two players have simultaneously attacked him, only one offence has oh, been committed. Okay. So sorry. you cannot commit two punishments, okay? Right. Oh, okay. I've learned something new. Yeah, right. Okay. There we go. So, had they both committed two different offences so say let's take an example here. both of them have punched a striker Yeah, you can commit give two red cards because there are two offences right. two players have punched a player but this is only one foul it doesn't matter that two people have done it so how do you make the judgement is the next question and our dear friend Keith Hackett has had his say on this <laughs> he has said there is only one man who can be punished so you have to send off the player who you feel has committed the worst offence <laughs> That's what didn't I? You should have stuck with your own answer. I should have stuck with your answer. I did say. So you're going for the worst defence. Right. So it could be something as simple as the ball was about to be tapped in by his right foot, and the player who commits the foul on the right foot. If there's no difference in the deliberation of the challenge, you go for the man who took the right foot. It could be that one is a two foot. It is a challenge, and one is just a trick, and you go for the two foot. It is a challenge, but you have to give the one who you feel has committed the worst offence. Right. Okay. That's so only one red card because there was only one Mm -hmm. offence. A combined action from two players, but it's only committed one offence. I didn't know that. So, while your instinct may naturally be to dismiss both, <laughs> Keith had read your mind, don't be mind. <laughs> the practice is, you can only get rid of one. <laughs> so, unfortunately, two in, and things have fallen down by the wayside, <laughs> mainly because Craig's listened to Charlie. <laughs> On to our third and final scenario from this Stephen Island strip. Again, please let us know down in the comments if you have any idea how this is related to Stephen Island. <laughs> or if you bought the book. <laughs> or if you bought the book. Or if Howard Webb's on the front of yours as well. <laughs> but we're going on to a title race. Oh, no. Okay? It's the final day of the season. Yeah. It's a fierce six-pointer to decide the title. The home team are three points ahead in the league. But the away team, if they win by five goals, will win the, win the title. Okay? Unbelievably, the away team attack non-stop and build a dramatic four-goal lead. Oh, oh no. no. We've all been there, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> the home team... Then, as you would predict, a bit like Craig Savage on Pro Evolution Soccer 2, yeah. start putting in ridiculous, desperate... Oh, I can see where this red is going. Right. Oh, shit. oh yeah. this is going to get abandoned. We've shown a series of red cards... To, uh, sorry, we've shown a series of yellow cards and two red cards, so you decide to talk and warn the captain as you're supposed to, but the captain pushes you. Oh. Okay? <laughs> it's so obvious that they're trying to get the game abandoned, so they win the title for a default 3-0, victory, uh, 3-0 defeat. What do you do? Do you want to go first, Craig, or me? 
But it's not what do you do? More importantly, what's Keith Hackett going to do? <laughs> <laughs> what's Keith Hackett done? Um, well, technically, if you attack a referee, referee has his own right to abandon the game. In his but own. But you're league. handing them the league. Aren't but you? I'm handing them we're, the league. We're we're talking about we're talking about a push, yeah, correct. But technically. If I was a ref, I would obviously abandon the game, but then that's the FA to decide what they do with the team. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, they can the team. The, the FA can deduct, obviously deduct the the offending team points, uh, and obviously they're going to award the game to the other the opposition. But you're only the referee, Craig. But I'm only a referee. So, so and what a damn you... good one it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what are you going to do in this instance, Craig? I, I, you have to abandon the game. You can't come over. Well, I don't can't let the referee. You can't let. I, I'm not going to get We've pushed to Canada, aren't we? I, I don't. Yeah, but I don't think you abandon. I think you sent him off. The well, of course, you can send him off, but then the lad pushed just, it. If there's subsequent red cards to be handed out, dished out afterwards, then I think you've got addition. But I don't think you abandon the game because you've been pushed. Even though it's deliberate, I think you have to play it through until you got to the what's it seven players minimum. Uh, six. six players. So once less than seven. Yeah. <laughs> so so we're we're of the opinion. Both of you agree that the player needs to be punished. Yes. Yeah. Craig, you're saying because it's an offence on the referee that the game should be abandoned? The referee has a right to abandon the game, yes. Due to that incident? Yes. Charlie, you're saying red card and carry on refereeing as normal and then... I think because yeah. it's the final game of the season he'll want to carry on. But yeah. I, I will want to carry on. You want to carry on? Uh, I'm I, the referee, I'm saying play on. He's saying play on. <laughs> what are you saying for the player? Red card, red card, red card, red card for the player. player. Red card for the player, we agree on that. Okay. If it was in a... In a Referee might use a bit of common sense. If it was during the middle of the campaign, he will abandon the game. If, because it's a final game of the season, he will probably want to carry on. Okay, fair enough. Well, I'm going to tell you what Keith Hackett said. Good old Keith! <laughs> and he says, you're both right. And do you know the reason you're both right? Because you cannot alter your approach because of what you suspect. And actually, uh, I really like from you two, morally, that you didn't even go down that road. No. Which is really nice, which is, well, don't punish him, let them play on and keep abusing you because they want to try yeah. and abandon it. You could just go with the approach, I'm not going to send anyone, no matter what. Yeah. But then that can cause some other issues. Well, that's what Mark Clattenberg did for Chelsea Tottenham years Let's ago. Let's not get involved in that show. <laughs> so, the correct Same. action to take is to send off the captain for pushing you, considered an assault. Mm-hmm. Continue to referee the game in a fair and firm manner. If, as a result, the home team are reduced to six players, whether by number of red cards, injuries or any other means, you cannot restart the game. The game is abandoned at that point. Right. The home club are reported to your authorities in your refereeing report, which I'm very upset you didn't mention. Oh no, we didn't know. We did uh, say you go to the FA, didn't it? <laughs> um, and we can all agree, as Keith Hackett says, is a very foolish way to try and secure the title. <laughs> and I've moral not end of that story. Or just park the bus you are three for four nil down and just hold on. Oh my god. Hold on, park the bus! <laughs> I've got to say, for a first episode, there were three brilliant questions. So, that is our first trip, sponsored by Stephen Island, apparently. Uh <laughs> Again, Who's next week? <laughs> please let me know if you know why Stephen Ireland's there. I haven't looked at the scenarios yet, but I quite like the look of David Moyes and his character a few pages later, so we might come to him next time. But uh, a massive thank you to you two for joining me and giving me your opinion. You both got two out of three. Craig would have been a full house if you didn't listen to the <laughs> idiot to your right. But unfortunately, there is no winner this time on Takeshi's Castle. So What a shock. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us along for this first episode of the series I hope you enjoyed the light hearted style please don't talk to us about the fact that we've not been we are not professional quali- by I'm the not a qualified referee by we the way. are just doing it as a bit of a light hearted view-, view on things and hopefully you will feel the same way too but a big thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe on YouTube follow us on Spotify and on Twitter at Honest Football 3 and we'll see you next time for some more refereeing tales Thank <music> you.